Welcome back, everybody. Safe, efficient, profitable. Today, we are going to be talking about trying to break down some of the silos within your PSM programs, your engineering and maintenance teams, and safety. Here we go. go. All right, welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Am I am I running this one or are you running this one? I'm running this one. Ah. I'm running this. I'm a PSM person. Here, Here we go. go. Here we go. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is our SOPs. Standard um, operating procedures. So standard operating procedures. A lot of times we have these documents and they're called SOPs. And they may be any version of third-party Rotom, internal Rotom. We got them from a... We uh, contracted that out, so we're good. Yeah, somebody else wrote them, you know, third-party... We there's some kind of combination of from my old plant and I brought it over and I kind of updated it, but now I left and went somewhere so else. So you're saying there could be like a whole bunch there of variables. Could be hodgepodge. Yeah, there we go. So I mean, like they may even be different formats than the same sure. location. Like they, they some parts of the system may have one template, others have a different format. And how often are we supposed to review these? So that's the deal. We're supposed to theoretically review these annually. However, one of the biggest gaps that I have seen in the last several years is that the folks who are reviewing them, same folks every year. And generally speaking, I don't know that there's a lot of good documented training on what we're reviewing them for. That's a good point. And most of the time, the individuals that are reviewing them are on the engineering, b and e, you know, refrigeration I, side. I'm safety. Am I doing this part of it? And they're not safety experts. So uh, when we talk about reviewing SOPs, they may be correct for the engineering side. They've got nothing to do with any of our safety programs at all. But what if you have lockout tagout? Well, what if you've got weather? What if you've got lockout? What if you've got elevated? What if you've got a leak? What if you've got a whole lot of things going <laughs> okay, on? Okay, I mean, now I understand. You know, a lot of times our SAPs are, are written for perfect weather. Nothing's going wrong. We have an emergency section, but it only gives us one set of scenarios, right? And, so and it always works. Yeah. Anytime I talk to my operators, I'm like, well, here's the leak. What are we going to do? And they're like, you know, well, we've got this SOP. And I'm like, so does this SOP address this specific leak? And there's all kinds of discussion and it's heated debate. And what really boils down to is that common is I can't write emergency shutdown or emergency stop Correct. for every single leak that there ever could and that makes be. Sense. And the ones that are listed may not work for everything that right. could uh, that's associated with that unit that you'd pull that SOP to. So what should you do? What it. should you do if you figure that out? So that's when we start evaluating. Maybe we need to broaden the scope of what we're writing. Maybe we have more than one emergency shutdown. Maybe we start writing additional plans. Free planning. Maybe we start having alternates written okay. in there. And then the other piece of it is, is that, you know, and, Engineering, maintenance, refrigeration operators, they're not safety experts. We're employing a safety expert at the facility right. because that's their lane. Right? And I may, so I don't have to have PSM knowledge to be safety. And right, we've got to pull them in. So they have to be a stakeholder in the SOP review and discussion in terms of things, even like punitive maintenance. Right. And some of those task procedures that well, we do. Well, do. do you want my lockout in your SOP? So that's, that's the next piece, right? So- other gap is that we're going to start seeing things in some of these templates that reference some stuff like for lockout procedures refer to. Now, sometimes I've seen the full on lockout in there. I would never advise against that. That's me. My opinion. I would just not write your lockout procedure within your SOP. But we'll start seeing things like refer to lockout procedure, refer to the PPE assessment, refer to. The and who wrote the lockout assessment. procedure? And half the time, I'd say actually more than half the time, we don't have that. Or we I wrote it as that. a safety person, but I don't have the PSM background. Or utilities wrote it, and they don't have the safety background. So either way, the document could have significant gaps is what I want you to know. PPE assessment for my refrigeration folks, if it doesn't cover the entire scope of what they could be doing, it likely could have gaps if I didn't have engineering and safety in the room having right. a discussion. Same goes for my task procedures. If we didn't do a task evaluation or a pre-job hazard analysis or whatever you want to call it, when we're talking about the, the hazards associated with that task and writing out that task procedure, safety wasn't involved, or if safety wrote it without refrigeration involved, we're going to see gaps. And so that's what, that's what we're really kind of seeing is that we've got to start getting those two groups in a row. Almost like building a community. We got to we got to be friends. We got to get in the right. together and we've got to review these documents as one because we're both 
stakeholders in the same document yeah, because we've got to make sure the PPE assessment dovetails with the confined space assessment dovetails with the lockup procedure mm-hmm. dovetails with our SOP and our task procedures and that they all say the nice same happy thing, right? Absolutely. Because most of the time they're all saying something different. Because if yours don't have it at if all. your process or procedure says one thing, mine says the other. How do we train? Well, that's really what it boils down to is that I'm going to be training folks on task procedures and SOPs. If there's no safety considerations in them, how can, I mean, yes, have, I'm giving them some kind of general awareness, right. monthly safety training, but in terms of for them to really know how to safely do their job, because there is a lot of gray area, we're just kind of expecting them to figure it out and freelance. And that's why we're seeing injuries. In right. my opinion, that's if it's, we have to tell them. Because they're new. How are they going to know? They don't know what they don't know. That's right. So you're talking about you may have to change a little onboarding. You may have to change a little bit of procedures. You need to change about who's actually reviewing it, what kind of training they have. Yeah, the reviewer needs to have some training on what they're reviewing it for. And we've got to pull safety in. I know that they feel overwhelmed and they may not want it. And they say, this is not my problem. But... In order They're to the expert a, for that subject. But yeah, they are the subject matter yeah. expert. And so for, they may not be able to advise on whether that's the correct shutdown in terms of the refrigeration technical piece. But when you have a discussion about here's the risk that I'm being exposed to, or you talk through right. the steps you have to do, they should be able to identify, well, here's where you're going to be standing. Oh, we need a fall protection. How are you, you going to tie off to? Well, you need this PPE. Because that's well, safety stuff, meters. but it's not going to be the SOP. Right. Yeah. Right. Nowhere in the SOP is say use the ladder and tie off here. So I think what it all really boils down to at the end of the day is, and y'all have been saying this for a long time, but poor refrigeration and maintenance and B and E, sometimes they get forgotten about a little bit yeah. because of most of our programs are really great about being perfect or production. But because there's so much dynamic changes and different jobs that we're doing on the refrigeration and the engineering and maintenance side. We don't always capture that real good. And then it's like those documents don't don't have anything in them. Our programs don't really align with what they're doing, what their procedures say. Right. And now we're just opening ourselves up to a lot of risk of people getting hurt as well as the citation. So I have engineering degree and experience, fought leaks, dealt with the amputation, all these awesome. things. You know what? I wouldn't know anything about any of the stuff you said unless I job shadowed them like I did. Yeah. So one of the things yeah. I did when I became a safety person, I didn't know. So I would just go on project day and I'd watch what they did. Agree. I didn't get paid extra for that. I just went I because I was like, if I'm going to be part of this and be responsible for it, I've got to understand. Yeah. I watched them do round. I still do that today. So, so, so solutions, right? So you bet. Solutions we talk about. I think training is the, is the biggest thing, right? right. So safety can't really identify the hazards if they don't know what refrigeration and maintenance and and boiler and utilities and all that for that matter is actually doing. So one thing is absolutely, I'm a proponent of safety people getting refrigeration training. I think that it's very helpful to understand physically what's going on with the system. But the second piece is, is absolutely job shadow, job shadow on weekends, job shadow, absolutely overhauls on the system when they're doing pump downs, when they're doing startups, when they're doing line breaks, when they're just doing their rounds, when they're changing check valves, PHAs, let's get involved for PHAs. You know, I realized the other day, if we've got people who have only been at the facility for a year, so safety engineering, my operators, maybe none of them were there for the last mechanical integrity or the last snowstorm or the last crazy event. Yeah. They may never, yeah. they may not know if they, Oh, that's we're fine. Like, no, there was, everybody may have turned over. So no one <laughs> that's may right. know the history yeah. at some of these locations that this actually happened. So sometimes we would you pull a, another location to help you with some of those processes? I absolutely would. So if there is, if that's, that's another option. So solutions is shadow. Who's there. Yep. If you find that you've got a greener team and they are a little bit newer, then yeah, absolutely. Start pulling in people from, sister locations that maybe do have a little bit more tenure or maybe were on some of the calls when they heard Absolutely. about some of this stuff going on at your location. That's how we get on some of the calls is to help yeah. almost be we're historian. Absolutely. So. You know, look at maybe getting some refrigeration training. Joe and I, obviously we do some get up to speed type training yeah. and stuff with our safety and PSM teams. I always want to make a point that just because you have someone managing documents, right? We're a document manager. We make sure that certain checks and, and balances, which is a document va- is in place and it is needed. We've got to make sure. But that's from- two different 
different thought patterns. Yeah. Though. We've got the compliance side and yes, we have the document, yep. but that person may not be the technical expert correct. and they may not be able to really sign off and say it's correct. They can just say that we have it, but they don't know if it's correct. Hold on. What, what if we're dealing with RMP? Okay. So that's a good one. Would so, we get environmental involved? Yeah. Environmental is absolutely going to potentially be a stakeholder. Okay. Especially like a PHA. Worst yeah. case scenario. Yep. We want to, we want to evaluate our PHA, get ready for worst case scenario. That may mean that we are starting to update our RMPs. I will absolutely. tell you that's a big one that we are seeing a lot of people maybe reevaluate what their Correct. RMP and We're going to do an episode later on that, but yes, yeah. that's absolutely. So, so they're really kind of taking a look at maybe training that we had for safety. Maybe it needs to be a little bit heavier in PSM so that they understand, you because again, Safety's got to sign off on documents. That goes back to the signing. Absolutely. Who can sign what and are we really qualified? So I think the biggest thing is we've got to sit down in the same room. We've got to really have those joint conversations together. And then a lot of job shadowing is, is really helpful so that we understand the utilities and refrigeration side the same way that we understand. Can't regulate it if you don't understand it. Yeah, we, it's really, really hard to identify the hazards and prevent yep. the injury if we don't understand what's going on. Absolutely. So These are our opinions. If you want some support, in person, like I said, we do PSM mini audits, some compliance audits from the PSM side. We do some training with safety for understanding the PSM system and all that. Allen-safety.com. You can check us out over there for in-person things. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can find us on LinkedIn, all of the socials. And AllenSafetyCoaching.com is a really great in-between. Got over 100 different episodes. Commercial free. You can rewatch them unlimited times and you get free unlimited email based coaching with Joe and I if in person services is That's not awesome. in the cards or in the budget this year. And as always, I would be missed if I didn't say, please, if this helped you, please like, share, subscribe. Really does help because we are not in the black on this. So we are uh, not making any profit here. So the entire point of why we're doing this is we want to get these episodes to those who need them and you sharing them really helps with that until next time. Thank you. Thank you for listening to safe, efficient, profitable, a worker safety podcast. If you're looking for more in-depth discussions or step-by-step -step solutions on all of the different safety and regulatory topics, please visit us at www.allensafetycoaching.com for web-based virtual coaching and training or at www.allen-safety.com to book our team for on-site services, training sessions, to order merchandise, to learn more about our team and what services we provide in the field, or just simply to request a topic for us to cover on our next podcast. If you found today's podcast helpful and would like to support our podcast further, please help us by subscribing, liking, and sharing this podcast with anyone that could benefit from the information we cover here as that helps us to continue to put out this free content. Thank you so much for your support.